Turn with me to Hebrews chapter 11. Hebrews chapter 11. And verse 6, Hebrews eleven six. 6. It says, and without faith, it's impossible to please him. You ever wonder why the devil tries so hard to get you out of faith? He doesn't want, because if he gets you out of faith, he keeps you from receiving from the Lord. Because faith is heaven's currency. The kingdom of God currency operates on faith. You put in faith and you get out whatever you need from the kingdom of God. Because you have to put your trust in him. So not only does it, if he, the enemy gets you out of faith, he keeps you from enjoying the goodness of God. He also keeps you from pleasing the Lord. And I mean, no, there's nothing that gives the devil more thrill than, than you being created in his image, but yet you're not pleasing him. But I'm looking at a group of people today that have made up their mind. God, I'm going to trust you. I'm going to put my trust in you. Some men trust in horses and some men trust in chariots, but I put my trust in the Most High God. I'm going to please you. God, you're going to be pleased with me. Remember what he said? Thou art my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. That means he, Jesus was in faith. He was trusting in the Lord. And how I many you know he's going to say to all of us, and I'm believing he's going to say it to me, at the end of my life, well done, good and faithful servant. You've been faithful over a few things. I'm about to make you ruler over much. And I believe he's going to be pleased because I live my life trusting in his word. He says, without faith, it is impossible to please him. For whoever would draw near to God must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who seek him. The King James says, you must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of those that diligently seek him. So what do you believe that God is? I believe that he is whatever I need him to be. If he's my healer, I have a scripture for that. With his stripes I'm healed. He is my healer. Amen. If I need, if I need finances, I've given and it shall be given back to me. Pressed down, shaken together, running over. So he is my provider because I've put my trust in him by letting him be my provider. He is my relationship restorer. He is whatever I need him to be. He is. He, I believe that he is, and I believe he's a rewarder of those that diligently seek him. Today I'm going to talk to you about something called faith-filled words. Faith-filled words dominate. Look at James chapter 3, verse 2. Hallelujah. Hebrews, James, Peter, Peter, John. James chapter 3 and verse 2. When you find it, say Amen. Hallelujah, you guys are good. For we all stumble in many ways, and if anyone does not stumble in what he says, he is a perfect man. That word perfect there is complete, a mature, grown man, able to bridle his whole body. He said, if you can figure out a way to keep from stumbling with your tongue, you'll be able to control everything about your body, be able to bridle your body. Verse 3, if we put bits into the mouths of horses so that they obey us, we guide their whole bodies as well. Look at the ships also. Though they are so large and are driven by strong winds, they are guided by a very small rudder. Wherever the will of the pilot directs. So also the tongue is a small member, like a rudder, and it boasts great things. How great a forest is set ablaze by such a small fire. And the tongue is a fire, a world of unrighteousness. The tongue is set among our members, staining the whole body. Setting on fire the entire course of life and set on fire by hell. For every kind of beast and bird and reptile and sea creature can be tamed and has been tamed by mankind. But no human being can tame the tongue. It is a restless evil full of deadly poison. With it, we bless our Lord and Father, and with it, we curse people who are made in the likeness of God. From the same mouth come blessings and cursings. My brothers, 
These things ought not to be so. Well, if they ought not to be so, let's fix it today. Can you say amen? Father, make us a hearer of the word, not just a doer. Give us eyes to see, ears to hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying to the church this morning. And I believe, Father God, as we leave here with faith-filled words in our mouth, that mountains will be removed, miracles will begin to take place in areas of our life that we've been struggling in. Father, today, we're going to get our mouth right in Jesus' name. If you believe that, say amen. amen. Hallelujah. If, you can, if a man offend not in word, the same as a perfect man and able to bridle his whole body. body. How many know when you, I don't know if, if, maybe you're not familiar with horses. I guess we live in a society where people are around animals and stuff like years ago. But uh, you put the bit underneath their tongue there. They had the bridle on there. And you have the reins are attached to that bridle. And whichever way you turn the head of that horse, that's the direction that horse is going to go in. And ladies and gentlemen, our tongue is where we, what we say out of our mouth is the direction that our head begins to look. And whatever you look at, that's what you're going to be drawn to. That's why you've got to put a watch. You've got to do like the little, little song that we sang with a little kid. Be careful little eyes what you see. <laughs> Be careful, little hands, what you touch. Be careful, little feet, where you go. Ladies and gentlemen, you don't ever outgrow that. You've got to put a watch over your eyes, and you've got to put a watch over your feet. You've got to put a watch over your hands, because you've got to make sure that what's in your heart is the Word of God. The Bible says, out of the overflow of the heart, the mouth speaks. And so we want to take our life in a way that pleases God. How many know this book that I hold in my hand here is the will of God? If you want to know about the will of God concerning healing, it says, with his stripes, I'm healed. If you want to know the word of God concerning your finances, he said that my God will supply all of your need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. If you want to know how to, how to raise your family, it'll tell you, if you spare the, uh, you spare the rod, you hate your child. The Bible says the rod of correction drives foolishness out of the heart of a child. The Bible says you train up a child in the way they should go. When they're old, they're not to depart. You can find out ways to raise your children by going to this book right here. Anybody know what I'm talking about? And so, so instead of trying to figure out how to do it your own way and asking God to bless it, you find out what God's already blessed and begin to line your life up with that. The Bible says in Proverbs 18 that the power of life and death is in the tongue didn't say the power of life and death is in the hands of God. didn't say the power of life and death is in the hands of the devil. The power of life and death is in the tongue. And so therefore it is vitally important as born again believers made in the image of God that we have control over our tongue and make sure that we're endeavoring to turn our heads toward the direction of the will of God for our life, which is the word of God. That belongs to us, and that's ours. So you control that horse by controlling its head. That rudder, the Bible says, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. And also it says, faith without corresponding action in the book of James is dead. I mean, you can be sitting still in the water and turn that rudder all day long, and you're just going to make a little splash in the water. That boat has to be moving for that rudder to have authority to change it. And so what happens is you begin to praise God and begin to thank God and you begin, begin to be a doer of the Word of God and then you let your mouth line up with your doing. And as you are heading toward the, the purposes and the plans of God, as you're heading into the, every storm the devil's trying to throw your way, you take your mouth and say, I'm not moved by what I see. I'm not moved by what I feel. I'm only moved by what I believe. And I believe the word of Almighty God in Jesus' name. The Bible says that I could call those things that be not as though they were. I call my body healed. I call that mountain of, of credit card debt. Be thou removed and be thou cast in the sea. And I don't doubt in my heart. You get those things by the words that come forth out of your mouth. So be, but look at James chapter 1 verse 19. Turn back a page there. James chapter 1 and verse 19 says, Know this, my beloved brothers, let every person be quick to hear, slow to speak, and slow to anger. So you're quick to hear what God's Word says, but you're slow to speak 
Why? Because you've put a governor on yourself and make sure you don't just say everything you feel. You don't just say everything that pops into your mind. You don't just say everything that just seemed like I just wanted to give a piece of my mind, glory to God, like you've got a piece you can afford to lose. You're quick to hear, but you're slow to speak. God, what is it you want me to say about this situation right here in Jesus' name? Well, how, how is it that you want me to talk about this thing? You just let me know how this thing works, and God, I'll get it done in the name of the Lord. So we're quick to hear, we're slow to speak, and we're slow to wrath. Don't waste words. Don't waste them because your words are powerful. We'll read in just a few moments. We're going to give an account for every idle word that we speak. An idle word is a non-productive word. Make sure your words have purpose. Make sure your words mean something. When you open up your mouth, you have that he.f. Hutton effect. Am I old enough to remember that commercial? Not a, because you you are slow to speak, and when you do speak, you speak the word of God. The angels are listening to what you have to say, and they're going to respond to the words that come forth out of your mouth. Hallelujah! Your your body may present you problems because problems because it's subject to be contacted by Satan to the five senses. We'll read that again. Your body may present you problems because it's subject to be contacted by Satan through the five physical senses. But God has provided a way to keep Satan's attacks from being successful. Look at Proverbs chapter 4. That's why the devil tries so hard to get in your eye gate, your ear gate, your mouth gate, what you can feel gate, whatever it is. Because that is his entrance into your life. But look at Proverbs chapter 4. Hallelujah. It says, verse 20, Proverbs 4, 20. My son, be attentive to my words. Incline your ear to my sayings. Let them not escape from your sight. Keep them within your heart. For they are life to those that find them and healing to all their flesh. Keep your heart with all vigilance, for from it flow the springs of life. Verse 24, put away from you crooked speech. King James says, put away from you a froward mouth. Put away from you crooked speech and put devious talk far from you. Make a covenant with yourself this morning before you leave that I'm going to do verse 24. I'm going to put away from me crooked speech. There's two ways you, put, you deal with crooked speech. Number one, you have to, uh, what I say is not going to be crooked, but what I say is going to line up with the word of Almighty God. And number two, I'm going to make sure that the TV I listen to, the radio I listen to, and the internet I look, I look at and listen to is lining up with the word of God and not agreeing with what I can see, smell, taste, and touch out here in the world. Are you listening to me? You have enough problems just by being in this planet Looking around, you go to Walmart, everybody's got, a, got a, 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 a badge of death on their face. You go into the doctor's office, everybody has a badge of death on their face. You go everywhere you go, everybody's got this thing like sick, 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 sick. Now you may be, you may be wearing it because you're going home and you're trying to, to protect an, old loved, an older loved one in your house. I don't know what your situation is. Or you may just be doing it because you're, you're polite and don't want to deal with the hassle. But either way, for the last year, everywhere we go, all you see is sick, 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 death, 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 sickness, death. Remember back before Biden was president when you got to hear the death counts every day? All of a sudden now we got a new president and it just got better. But watch this now. All the, we live in this world. You can't control what you see. That means you've got to double up when you get home to make sure you're putting life into your spirit. You're putting life into your body. You're putting life on the inside of you. And folks, the only thing that combat, combats everything that you see around you, everything you hear around you, is you might have got to put controls in your life to make sure you're seeing and hearing and doing the word of Almighty God. Hallelujah. So put that away from you. A froward mouth, a disobedient mouth. It's not, it's not, it has no control. It's not under the conviction of the word. 
You can stop Satan's attacks by speaking God's word. Can somebody say amen? amen? How do you do that? All of a sudden, you wake up in the morning, you got a tickle on the back of your throat. You wake up on the morning, and you, you know, your, 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 your hand, skin feels clammy, and you and your eyebrows hurt. I mean, you don't understand it. Just just feels weird and get blah, not feeling that good and kind of aching in your body right now. The first thing you want to do is go tell your husband, your wife, you know, I'm not feeling all that well today. Because I'm, you know, out of the mouth of two or three witnesses, let everything be established. You know, I'm not feeling that well today. And she'll say, you know what, you don't look that good either. Unless you're married to Trish, you say, I'm not moved by that. You're the heel of the Lord right now. She'll just preach at me for 15, 20 minutes, and I thank God she does. There's a drive on the inside of you, and you first get those symptoms to go tell somebody how you feel. There's a drive when you've got a pain in your body to let people, you know, oh, my leg, my knee's been bothering. Oh, my legs, oh, my, you know, it's, it's, just, it's just everything. Oh, just, and, and you just want to tell somebody so bad so they'll know how to pray. <laughs> but ladies and gentlemen, you have the authority to stand up and say, body, I'm not moved by what I see. I'm not moved by what I feel. How I many when you get a little older, you can't be moved by what you see? <laughs> Man, that gravity works, glory to God. (laughs) Hallelujah. Your tattoo of the lion of the tribe of Judah has turned into a giraffe. (laughs) I'm not moved by what I see. I move by what I feel. I'm not moved by what I feel. I move by what I believe, and I believe the word of Almighty God. Psalms 103 says that he satisfies my mouth with good things so that my youth is renewed the eagles. Bless the Lord, O my soul. The reason why in Psalms 103 you've got to say, bless the Lord, O my soul, is because sometimes you don't feel like it. Sometimes you don't get up there like, you know, I think I'm going to put on my dancing leotard and, and worship God. Sometimes you don't feel like it. That's the best time to praise him. That's the best time to speak life over your body. I'm not moved by what I see. I'm not moved by what I feel. I'm moved by the word of God. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and I will not forget not one of all of his benefits. He, he, he forgives all of my iniquities. He heals all of my diseases. He satisfies my mouth with good things so that when my youth is renewed like the eagles, my food and my water, they are blessed. And you take sickness away from the midst of me in Jesus name. Can you say amen? Amen. Hallelujah. That's how you, by the way, that's how you take the vaccine if you have to take it. Some of you, your job requires you to take a vaccine to, to show up at work. Well, I'll just quit. Well, you can, you do whatever God tells you to do. But if you decide to take the vaccine, you say, well, God, if you can bless my fruit and food and water, you can test this experimental injection I'm about to take. Amen? Amen. But I just want you to know, Lord, they might be have something in here that my body doesn't like and doesn't need. But you know what my situation is, and I got a piece about it. I just want you to know, Father God, I'm trusting you that no weapon formed against me can prosper in Jesus' name. Or you can just decide, I'm not going to take any vaccine. That'd be fine too. But whether you take a vaccine or don't take a vaccine, how many know we're not going to be in fear? Because we've been inoculated by the word of Almighty God. Hallelujah. By the way, the vaccine does not. Have you noticed when you hear about being vaccinated, you never hear the word immunized? You know, we used to get, my mom would have to get our immunization chart and take it with us to get into school. But you know, so they don't talk about it immunizing any longer. Why? Because you take the shot. You're taking a shot to be safe from something that has a 99.5% recovery rate. And you're taking a vaccine that's been tested for like, 14 days or <laughs> something. Why? Anyway, I'm just saying, don't put your trust there. Put your trust in the Most High God. 
Paul said, whether in the body or out of the body, I know not. Whether vaccinated or unvaccinated, I still will trust the Lord. Can you say amen? Everything you do, you got to do it in faith. And everything you do, you're going to have to keep your mouth lined up with what God's word says about you. And with his stripes, you are healed. Can you say amen? Hallelujah. Look at Matthew chapter 12. Matthew chapter 12. You love the word? Matthew chapter 12. Aren't you glad you're in the Word Church this morning? Hallelujah. Matthew chapter 12. I love this verse. Look at verse 33. It says, either make the tree good and its fruit good, or make its tree, or make the tree bad and its fruit bad. For a tree is known by its fruit. In other words, you can't be a good tree and produce bad fruit. The fruit that you're producing is not an attack of the devil. The fruit that you're producing is a choice that you've made by the words that come forth out of your mouth. He said, you brood of vipers. Remember the first time you heard or saw a snake in the Bible? Do you remember that story? You have to go back to Genesis You brood of vipers, how can you speak good when you are evil? For out of the abundance of the heart, out of the overflow of the heart, the mouth speaks. The good person, out of the good treasure, brings forth good. And an evil person, out of the evil treasure, brings forth evil. Another way to say that is, a good person, out of the good deposit that he's put into his heart, is going to speak good things. An evil person, out of the evil deposit he's put in his heart, is going to speak forth evil things. Verse 36, I tell you, on the day of judgment, people will give an account for every careless, idle, non-productive word that they speak. For by your words you will be justified, and by your words you will be condemned. Now look up here at verse 36. He says, I tell you on the day of judgment. Get out of your mind just for a moment the judgment seat of Christ. Get out of your mind the end of your life when you stand before God. Let me tell you what judgment is. Judgment and harvest are the same days. It just depends on what you've been saying forth out of your mouth. When the words that come forth out of your mouth begin to produce, and then your words you've been speaking have been against God's word, and now you've got things happening in your life that are against God's word, that's a day of judgment. That's when your words are judging you and bringing it to pass in your life. But how do you know when you begin to walk in everything the word of God has for you, and the blessings begin to come in, we call that also a day of blessing. Hallelujah. That's when the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart that have been acceptable in his sight, he becomes strength and redeemer in that area of my life. Hallelujah. So by your words, you're justified. And by your words, you are condemned. By your words, you're acquitted, or by your words, you're held into prison. And so you make up your mind, Lord, by your grace. There's nobody that can tame a snake. There's nobody that can tame the tongue. There's nobody that can tame these things. But Lord, if you'll let your grace begin to work on the inside of me and give me a hunger for the word of Almighty God and let me begin to hide your word in my heart that I might not sin against you. I will not sin against you with my mouth. I will not sin against you with my thought life. I will not sin against you with the actions that I produce because I've got so much word on the inside of me. And out of that deposit of the word, Word, I have an overflow. My mouth speaks what I've been putting on the inside of my heart. Hallelujah. Now look with me at Numbers chapter 13. Numbers chapter 13. Oh, it's so good. God sent, God, Moses sent the spies into the land. And it says in verse 25, at the end of 40 days, they returned from spying out the land. And they came to Moses and to Aaron and to all the congregation of the people of Israel in the wilderness of Paran and Kadesh. They brought back word to them and to all the congregation and showed them the fruit of the land. And they told them, we came to the land which you sent us. It flows with milk and honey. That This is the fruit. However, the people who dwell in the land are strong. The cities are fortified and, every, and very large. And besides, we saw the descendants of Anak there. 
The Amalekites dwell in the land of Negev. The Hittites, the Jebusites, the Amorites dwell in the country. And the Canaanites dwell by the sea and along the Jordan. But Caleb quieted the people. Sometimes, folks, you may not be able to quiet the people you're around, but you know what? You can put, you can, sometimes you have to quiet your own spirit. Sometimes you've got to quiet your own mind. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Does your mind ever run? Have you ever heard of my mind's racing? Have you ever heard of somebody talking about racing their engine? You know what that means? They're in neutral. They got the clutch in. But they're boom, 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 boom. If it's a Harley, it's boom, 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 boom. It's bike week. Sometimes your mind's racing. You're sitting there in neutral. You got the clutch pushed in. And your mind just running and running and running. Sometimes you've got to be still and know that he's God. You've got to quiet yourself. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Yeah, I see the giants. I'm not ignoring the giants. Folks, faith is not denial. Faith is not denying there's giants. Faith is not denying there's a mountain. Faith is not denying there's COVID-19. Faith is not denying there's cancer. Faith is not denying there's melanoma. Faith is not denying arthritis. Faith is not denying diabetes. Faith is saying, yes, I acknowledge those things are there, but the greater one lives on the inside of me. And I've been born again of incorruptible seed, the incorruptible seed of God's word. And I'm not only born again by that seed, but I've renewed my mind in that seed right now. And I found in the word of God that with his stripes, I am healed. I'm blessed in the city. I'm blessed in the field. I'm blessed coming in. I'm blessed going out. You can change your world by the words that come forth out of your mouth. You can change your education by the words that come forth out of your mouth. Stop saying, well, I can't do this and, and I got to do that. Maybe you want to finish your college. Maybe you want to finish some kind of studies, things like that. And life has gotten the way. And you have to, you feel like you need to tell everybody why you're not in school. You have to tell everybody why you didn't get your degree. You have to tell everybody why you didn't finish this or finish that. They that you owe no one any explanation for your life, but you can begin to take your mouth and say, listen, I may be there right now, but here's what I'm going to do with the Word of God. I've got full ride tuitions and scholarships. God has given me the mind of Christ, and I'm going to finish what I started. He that began a good work in me is able to complete it. I will get this thing done in Jesus' name. It may not look like it right now, but you're looking at a college-educated man. It may not look at it right now, but you're looking at a man with his real estate license. I may look look at it right now, but I've got my insurance license. I've got this. I've got this study. I've got that study. I have everything I need to make a pile of money, and I'm a tither. Can you say amen? amen. Stop. Bible, Bible says that you can have what you say, but God's people keep saying what they have. Here's something I've learned, that when I find myself in a hole, when I find myself in a hole that I can't get out, I found that it's very, very important to stop digging. And you dig the hole with the words that come forth out of your mouth. You dig the hole with a, by, by saying, well, you know, it looks like it's getting worse. It looks like the economy. And now what are we going to do now that the Democrats in charge? Same thing you did when the Republicans in charge. You better believe God. If nothing else, the last election told us that Democrat and Republican is two heads of the same snake. But you better put your trust in God and believe God for an awakening to touch this nation. Because, ladies and gentlemen, the answer is not in Washington. The answer is not in Tallahassee. The answer is in the hearts of men and women in this city, in that city, in that community. And as the fire of God begins to sweep over this nation and he begins to shake everything that can be shaken. And men begin to stop saying what they're afraid of. And they begin to call this nation back and say this nation was founded on good godly principles. That God, this nation is one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Hallelujah. We the people, we the people, we the people. We have in Washington, D.C. right now the government we deserve. Are you listening to me? It shouldn't have been that close. It's because we the church are not doing our job. But I've showed up to duty today. 
And the way we're going to change this nation, nation is to begin to change the hearts and lives of men and women and begin to change the words that come forth out of their mouth. Hallelujah. Are you listening to me? Are you listening to me? I could probably name you on my hand. Maybe, maybe, maybe both hands. Everyone in this nation <laughs> that voted for Joe Biden because he thought he was the best person for the job. They vote, anyone that voted for him, voted for him because they were afraid of Donald Trump. Hey, listen to me. They were afraid of this. It, most people cast their vote out of fear, not in faith. I'm here to tell you right now, ladies and gentlemen, we can change this nation with the words that come forth out of our mouth. We can change this nation by changing the hearts and minds of people. And so we've got to quit looking at the news and agreeing with them how bad things are. And we're going to have to start looking at the news and calling those things that be not as though they were. We are one nation. We're a nation that's in revival. We're a nation that cares more about God, cares more about Jesus, cares more about the Word of God than they care about any other political agenda on this planet. Are you listening to me? And how many know if we begin to take the Word of God and change this nation and change the hearts and lives of people, you won't have to protest about abortion because the hearts and lives of people will be changed and the Abortion clinics will shut down by themselves because we've taught people that life is precious and life is real and life, hallelujah, comes from God and it's to be protected. And you can put all the rules you want to on the book and you should. But if we do that without changing the hearts of people, we'll be right back where we are five years later because the, have you figured out the devil doesn't stop? You think you got this thing slapped down and it pops up over here. You think you got it slapped down and it pops up over here. But you change the hearts and lives and people. That lie doesn't work anymore. The power to change your life, the power to change your family, the power to change this nation is having the word of God in your heart and speaking it forth out of your mouth in Jesus' name. Are you listening to me? Glory to God. Let me finish reading here. But Caleb quieted the people before Moses and said, Let us go up at once and occupy it, for we are well able to overcome it. Then the men who had gone up with him said, We're not able to go up against the people, for they are stronger than we are. So they brought to the people of Israel the bad report. The King James calls it an evil report of the land. And they, they spied out saying, the land through which we have gone to spy it out is a land that devours its inhabitants. And all the people that, that we saw in it were of great height. And we saw that these guys were giants. He goes on to say, verse 13, we seem to ourselves like we were grasshoppers. And because we seem to ourselves that we were grasshoppers, so we seem to them. When the church of the Lord Jesus Christ in Brevard County, when the church of the Lord Jesus Christ in a little town that seems insignificant called Malabar, with a group of people that come together from all walks of life, get together and realize we're not grasshoppers. When it says that we have a government of the people, for the people, and by the people, the people that are in this nation because of the revival that's sweeping the land are kings and priests. They're sons of the Most High God. We're made in the image of God. We were not created out of pond scum, but we were made in the image and likeness of God. Hey, listen to me. We did not evolve. We were created in God's image and after His likeness. Like the poem says, I once was a tadpole long and thin and then I was a frog with my tail tucked in and then I was a monkey in a coconut tree and now I am a doctor with a PhD that is not who we are so 
What's wrong with these kids? We sent them to the schools that we paid for with our own taxes. And they never heard the Bible. People want the Bible back in school. I'd be happy if the Bible came back into people's houses. I mean, if we had Bible in people's homes, we could contradict even the lies that are going on in the schools. Are you listening to me? But we're going to stop seeing ourselves as grasshoppers. And the world's going to stop seeing us as grasshoppers. And the sleeping giant is, being, is risen, rising right now in Jesus' name. And it belongs to us. The only way you can get saved is through faith-filled words. Romans 10, 8 and 10 says, that If thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in thy heart that God had raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. That's how you get born again. God has placed the plan of redemption on the miracle capability of words. James chapter 1, verse 18 says, Of his own will he begat us with the word of truth that we should be a kind of first fruits of his creatures. First Peter 1 Peter 1.23 says, Being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible, by the word of God, which liveth and abides forever. The Bible's secret of words is what belongs to us. Words have the ability to carry power. Words are vehicles, are carriers of faith or fear, of death, freedom, or bondage. Hebrews 4.12 says, For the word of God is quick, it's powerful, it's sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even the dividing of sunder of soul and spirit, of the joints and the marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and the very intents of your heart. You'll get in the Word of God, and you'll begin to hide it in your heart, and it'll begin to show you not only what your thoughts are, it'll show you what the intents of your heart were, and you can begin to change those intents to line up with God's intents. And then the Word that comes out of your mouth will be real. It'll be strong. Words are vehicles. They're carriers of faith, fear, life, death, freedom, and bondage. My hand is the carrier of the strength in my arm. I have, depending on how many curls I've done at the gym, to how many push-ups I can do, depending on how much time I've spent developing the strength of my biceps and my triceps and my forearms, my hands are the ones that carry the strength of my arms. My words carry the strength of Of the word of God that is incorruptible, cannot change. The word that stood out there and spoke to nothing and created everything with the substance of God's word and his faith. And ladies and gentlemen, we have the ability as people that are born again, created in God's image, to take the word that God spoke and speak it out. People think like, well, you know, you go to a Word of Faith church. That's where they go. Hey, they believe in that name it, claim it, and frame it. You ever heard that term before? They believe in that blab it and grab it. They just think they can just say anything they want, bring it to pass. No, I don't believe that. I believe I can say everything God says, and God's Word brings itself to pass. I've just chosen to line up and say what God says instead of what the lies of the enemy say. Can you say amen? So it's not name it, claim it, grab it and grab it. It's hiding the word of God in our heart that we might not sin against God and speaking out of the overflow of my mouth and bringing to pass because just like my arms have the, my hands have, uh, have the ability to carry the strength of my arms, my words have the ability to carry the strength of a God that cannot fail. Because I'm speaking his words. It's called confession. Confession means to say the same thing. I'm not pulling this out of my ear. I say what God says about me. And God says with his stripes I'm healed. God says my days of sickness and disease are over. God says I'm overcomer by the blood of the lamb and by the word of my testimony. And I don't love my life unto death. 
the word of God says that if, if it be your will, you can heal me. And Jesus said, I will be thou made whole. And I didn't pull that out of my ear. I pulled that out of the word of almighty God. And I choose to believe what the word says above what my body says, above what my doctor says, above what my oncologist says, above what my psychiatrist says, above what anybody else on this planet says. I choose to believe the word of almighty God. Let every man be a liar and let God's word be true. I believe the word of almighty God. Can you give the Lord a hand clap of praise for that? Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. It works every single time, doesn't it? Hallelujah. It's mine. Mark eleven twenty three. Verily I say unto you that whosoever shall say unto this mountain. What do you say to the mountain? Be thou removed and be thou cast in the sea. And I don't doubt it in my heart. You know why I don't doubt it in my heart? Because my heart is filled with the word of God. Sometimes, sometimes we get over into confession before we spend time meditating in God's Word. I, I mean, you can't go wrong by speaking the Word. But if you're just throwing something up against the wall and seeing what sticks, there's not a lot of power in that. But Joshua said, Thy word, I'm going to take that word and I'm going to meditate on it day and night. I'm not going to let it depart from my eyes. I'm not going to let it depart from my mouth. And then I'll have, then I'll have good success. When you're reading the word this week, spend time meditating on the word. Let me tell you something. I am a man of action. I like to do stuff. I read books standing up because I don't like to sit down. I'm messed up. I'll sit for a minute and I'm like, I get to this cheek and that cheek and this cheek. I stand up. I just walk around my room just read to myself. Sometimes I'll kneel at my bed and put all my books there to do that. Why? Because I'm tired of sitting at that desk. And I get up. Just, I'm just a man of action. Can I tell you something? The hardest thing to do sometimes for me is to Get my mind still. First thing in the morning, when I got a million things to do and I've already overslept an hour. Don't shout me down because I'm preaching good. I know you never do that. But realize that what I've got to do today is the most important thing in the world. And the only way I'm going to be able to accomplish what I have in front of me today is I've got to spend some time putting the Word of God on the inside of me. And I'll get the Word of God. And I'm not just trying to read my scripture so I can check my box and I've get my reading for the day. But make sure while I'm reading, if the word of God begins to read me, I stop and think about it. Meditate on it. Make a note about it. Put my Bible down, close my eyes, and begin to murmur that, mutter that over to myself. What am I doing? I'm putting it in my heart. I'm putting it in my mind. I'm pulling down the thoughts that are contrary to that and I'm thinking about it. And I mean, no, once I've done that and it becomes mine, listen to me, then saying it out my mouth is not something I have to work on do, doing because now that word is in me in abundance and it just comes out naturally. Are you listening to me? And, and part of meditating on the Word of God is confessing the Word of God and saying these scriptures out loud, doing that. But there comes a point in time when you've got to be still and know He's God. And let that Word find its place on the inside of you. It'll sift the intents of your heart. And then you speak it out your mouth. And because it's not just a Bible verse but it's God's word speaking to me about my situation. My belt of truth just turned into the sword of the spirit and it's got a nuclear warhead at the tip of it. You know what I'm talking about? Well, the only fight you fight is the fight of faith. We get in our mind. 
Anybody like the Russell Crowe movie, Gladiator? Isn't that a good movie? It's a, maybe it's a guy movie, I don't know. But I like you know, getting that sword, and he's up there, and beating people's brains in with rocks and stuff. I think it was great. You know what? Sometimes fighting the good fight of faith is just sticking the Word of God there and letting the devil run into it. Just being still, say, you know what? It's mine. And I think it's good that we get the idea of the, of the shield that is the Roman shield, which is our shield of faith, that quenches all the fiery dark of the wicked one. But you know what? Had the Apostle Paul lived in 2021, he would not have used the Roman soldier. He would have used Star Trek analogy. I'm convinced. I've been, with the, I've been married to a Trekkie long enough to know, but it's just, I'm, I'm seeing the light now, I'm understanding. How many know when the shields are up on the Enterprise, there's not some goofy looking leather shield out there. They're encased in a bubble. Hallelujah. They're encased in a bubble. And all their power, and I love this all the time, is divert all the power from here over to the shields to make the shield stronger. Anybody else Trekkies in here? And they divert all the power to the shields. And all of a sudden, here comes the something torpedoes. Wait a minute, proton torpedoes, thank you. <laughs> Did I say it right, proton? Photon, the photon co- torpedoes. I don't read lips very well. She went, up. Oh. And all of a sudden, here comes that photon torpedo. I like it because they're on the set, they all go. You know, they all do it together. One, two, three. Let's do it. Everybody goes this way. One, two, three. That was so good. <laughs> Whoa. Now we got one coming this way, right? One, two, three. <laughs> and I'm just having fun. The devil gives you his best shot, and all we got, let's go this way, one, two, three. Hallelujah. And you know what else we got? They got something called a tractor beam. You know what that means? Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I'm going to dwell on the house of the Lord forever. Can you say amen? So yes, it's good to see that you got a shield out there. Just know everywhere you go, you got a, there's a bubble around you. And no weapon formed against you can prosper. And from that place of faith, from that place of position, how many know we're supposed to do things in his name? In, his na- in the name of Jesus is not a cool way to end your prayer over lunch today. In the name of Jesus. Watch this. I step in that name. And I'm in the name of Jesus. And from the position of his name, mountain, be thou removed and be thou cast in the sea. And I don't doubt it in my heart because my heart is so full of the word of Almighty God. My shields are intact. My words have power. Now stand still and see the salvation of the word of Almighty God. Did you get anything out of this today? Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hey, man, I could preach on this all afternoon, and I almost did. Hallelujah. Just stand up with me, please. You've been sitting for a few minutes. Hallelujah. Could you turn the music up a little bit, please? Thank you, Lord Jesus. Say this with me. Just repeat after me. In the name of Jesus, I thank you for the word. Today, I make a commitment to put your word on the inside and to keep putting it in until it comes out of me in abundance. The word and your love will flush out all fear. So my words will be faith-filled, not fear-filled. I am healed. I am healthy. I'm rich. I'm blessed. I have the peace of God. No weapon formed against me 
can prosper. I'm blessed. I'm in that bubble. My shields are up. I thank you, Lord. I'm protected. I'm in the secret place. A thousand may fall at my side. 10,000 at my right hand. But it will not come near me. Because I'm in the secret place. Last one. I will say of the Lord, you are my refuge. You are my shelter. In you do I put my trust. I trust you, Lord. I trust your word. Just lift your hands up all across this room. Just begin to worship him right now. There's a spirit of revelation that's coming over people right now. Hallelujah. God, I knew this, but I let this slip. That's why I preached it today. I've never heard anything like this before. That's why I preached it today. I've been doing this, but I'm realizing I'm going to do it more than ever. That's why I preached this today. Faith-filled words dominate. Now begin to thank Him for the ability to speak faith. Begin to thank Him for the, that your eyes will see and your ears will hear. Thank Him right now. I forgot. I'm sorry, that's tongues. It's Sunday morning. Can you do tongues on Sunday morning? Yeah, we can. <laughs> Oh, riambo sing bende gang de lambro mosso ma ma mambringi de yando mondo. I worship you, Lord. I worship you, Lord. I worship you, Jesus. I give you glory and I give you honor and I give you praise right now. Hallelujah. 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 Are you out of your situation yet? No, but you can see the light at the end of the tunnel and it's not a train. They're coming out today. Hallelujah. There's a way out of where you're at. There's a way out of your depression. There's a way out of your bondage. There's a way out of your debt. There's a way out of your poverty. There's a way out of that terminal disease. There's a way out of that lifelong disease. There's a way out and it's the word of Almighty God and it's living and abiding on the inside of you. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, we are good trees and we produce good fruit. Hallelujah. We're going to stop blaming the devil for bad fruit and we're going to change the words that come forth out of our mouth. We're going to change the deposits we start putting in our heart. Hallelujah. So the word of God can have full effect on the inside of me now. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I'm Barista. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Thank you. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you. Thank you, Lord Jesus.